It's the worst idea. Taking it to your teacher? I mean, I know I'm your teacher. Today, read me a story and I'll tell you what I think. That's not at all set up. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between a $1,000 and a $10 million Riley? Before I, before I read you that paragraph, which I may have already read to you. What's the difference between a $1,000 violin? violin? I bet you that the $10 million violin is really old and really famous. And really famous. And probably Italian. And probably Italian. Thank you for answering all my questions for me. Right, good, done. <laughs> the main difference between a $1,000 and a $10 million violin is the tone. What? <laughs> Who wrote this crap? <laughs> this is from a website called Orchestra, uh, Orchestra Central. Orchestra Central is commenting on the tone, so it's $10 million better a tone. So, is that what they're that, saying? Does that mean the more expensive an instrument, the better tone it is? That's what they're saying. Mm. So if you want to get a really, really good violin, you have to spend a lot of money. That's what they're saying. <sighs> if you want a good tone, you have to spend a lot of money. Okay, of course it's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. I've been around brand new instruments just bought, just strung up, with the tone of the alleged old masters, with the look of the most beautiful antiqued violin you could possibly imagine. And for me, I would rather not spend $10 million on an instrument because what else can you use $10 million for? Literally anything else. Literally <laughs> anything else. So why do people spend this money on one instrument? Let's talk about that. Who buys them? Well, the last century when they were not so Performers that could afford them. Performers used to be able to afford them. And Sophie owns a few. Josh Bell owns his. Yeah. I think even the Gitless owns his. Then they became so ridiculously expensive. Although the instrument's not changed. No. Since the last no, century until no. now, but nothing's changed nothing's about it. Nothing's changed about it it's except just, the market value. Yeah, I mean, the instrument's still well looked after because it's available. Yeah. Um, and then they went, they skyrocketed from um, hundreds of thousands yeah. to millions. To several millions and then people got on that they were so few in number left yeah that they're valuable to own it's an antique value yeah i totally understand yeah, it so as far as like a it's a piece of art mm. people do acknowledge that yeah talk about with instruments and there's you know um it's history it's, it's history. art yeah 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 but the people buying them are banks banks and really rich people foundations they yeah. have got yeah, well, actually, these people think they're doing something really important. So they're, they're, yeah. they're buying it either for an investment or to pass on to an amazing violinist to play. That's great. But what else could you do with $10 million to help support the arts in this country right. or in any country? $10 million would buy a lot, a lot of instruments for schools, say, for primary schools. For high school. So one performer that could get their hands on any instrument could afford, you know, even you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollar instrument or more. Yeah. They could still afford that. Yeah. But there's this belief that no, they must play on these yeah. strats and granaries yeah. and whatever else. And they're beautiful instruments, there's no doubt about it. But every other instrument since has just been a copy of those instruments. So we well, save that thought for the actual video. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay, I can just rain it in because that's a whole that's a whole video series on that. All right. So the people um, who can afford to buy these instruments, they're in a very particular class of people. They're people where ten million dollars isn't really that much for them. The people buying them. Yeah, the people who are buying them, and and the people who are buying them really do believe that they're contributing to the art world or the the world of the arts in a really positive sense. But they're doing two things that they're not, well, they, they probably don't care about what I'm going to say. Who cares, right? But I, they're driving up the price by bidding at auction, driving that price up and up and up, just like real estate. Uh, yes. And then for everyone else who wants to own an old instrument, they're looking up to these people and going, oh, you must buy an old instrument 
So all these, you know, mediocre, relatively old Italian or European instruments, all of a sudden they put these massive prices on there. So, you know, you drive up the top and it automatically brings up the mediocre to be uh, way too expensive. Yeah, aren't there a lot of trade instruments from Yeah, or where they've come from, or, yeah, that's right. Even more. There's a bunch of cowboys out there, I tell you. That's another episode. It says, says here, so these okay. are all, all over 100 year old instruments. Yeah. Which mine is over 100 years old, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, their wood has aged, <laughs> has had time to age in such a way that they sing. <sighs> so is, it, is, there, is there a myth that oh, violins, unless they're right. being played, it oh, sorry, comes a myth, go right, Unless they're not being played. Yeah. Because, yes, if you leave a violin there, it gets stagnant. It's not singing, it's not vibrating. It's yeah. Not being played. It's not yeah. being looked after. Yeah. Like, ignore that. So an old instrument that's had a century or three mm. uh, of constant being played. Yeah, looked after. Looked and, after. Yeah. That's why Australians that are, you know, in the museums because they're pristine mm. or being played because they're in pristine condition. Does that mean because they've had those centuries, literal centuries of uh, being played on, that they sing better than a modern instrument? And the modern press, oh, that's another video. Yes, yeah, it's that. another video, but yeah, okay. So, the myth is a violin can only sing if it's old. Okay, so, we should do a video where we have an old violin and we knock over the sound post. Would you be willing to do that to a certain Marty? That you I want? would. I yeah. would be willing to get that would certain you, instrument you back. You have to get your mum's approval. Oh. No, I'm sure think it's hilarious. <laughs> All right, there are other siblings that are, you would need to. Yeah, no, he wouldn't. He thought it was good. But yeah, so we'll get the old one back and we'll move the sound post around a few ways. And you see that a millimeter or two in the wrong way, the sound post, it changes the sound completely. It will mm -hmm. make it sound choked, harsh, high frequency. Uh, move it again, it'll sound deeper, richer. It's actually a lot to do with the setup and the care that's been taken with the instrument over the years and the angle of the neck because as we all know the old instruments aren't in their original form anyway but that can be another video too mm -hmm. yeah so many yeah. ideas yeah <laughs> what is it about the, the change because the neck used to be like angled down and now it's no no so the neck, there's more angle on the neck creating more pressure and then the bass bar takes on that pressure as well so it creates more sound so the, the early instruments were more like that and the, the later instruments had the neck hacked off and uh, a new neck, a longer, I've got to get a proper person in to talk about this. Do we know any? <laughs> you know we do. <laughs> what, what else? No, no, I want to go back to what you said about, oh. uh, more I was saying about, so old instruments have had, they've been played more. So oh, yeah, do yeah. modern instruments, yeah. reframe it, the modern instruments need to break the new so some new instruments are horrifyingly awful and some new instruments are absolutely stunning uh, straight away and some instruments become better with a bit of playing. The, the point is you can't judge an instrument by its $10 million price tag actually or its $50 price tag. I mean I have seen an Aldi violin and it was pretty rank. The bow was like paper mache, it was like carved with a, you know, someone had just whittled the wood away and made a sort of bow shape. It was amazing. Um, Don't buy one. <laughs> I think maybe, maybe not breaking in an instrument, but there's certainly a, for a performer's point of view, get time to get be comfortable with an instrument. Because I've, I've had violins on loan where I've not had them long enough and I'm like, they're the nice. But I'm not. I go back to my instrument. I'm like, oh, I immediately yeah. because I know this instrument. Yeah. So I think there's that, but I don't think it's necessarily this new instrument maybe needs a month. Or yeah, it's not necessarily a new instrument to thing. get the sounds out. Otherwise. You're practicing all the time on one instrument, and your body and your mind are so microscopically attuned to every single nuance of your instrument. Mm. And then someone else passes you something that looks exactly the same because all violins basically look the same. But all those measurements, they're slightly different. Tuning, sometimes the string length is a little bit different, so all your fingers go down and they're not in the right place. 
So each individual instrument is completely different, even though it looks exactly the same. So yeah, any instrument you have to wear in, as you say. Get used to, get comfortable yeah, with. Yeah, it's, it's a getting comfortable with. And the problem with the old thing, the big price tag thing is, if those instruments are really difficult to play, everyone blames themselves and they work really hard to get the absolute best out of these instruments, but if it's a cheap instrument and it doesn't quite sound exactly right at first, they blame the instrument. That's why I'm... Oh, such a big topic that we've got more videos to come out of it, but that's why when there was a particular modern versus old violin uh, comparison, some of the criticism that came from that was that these violinists were only playing them for a few minutes in a hall or in the hotel they were doing it out of, rather than, no, you should have this old instrument, this modern instrument for a month or so and really get it. And I kind of understand that. So you feel that you should have an instrument for a long time to get used to it, whereas, you know, I do shows with eight violins lined no. up and I've got to get used to it like that. No, so no, I think it, I think if you, um, you need to, um, I had a really good point. I'm sorry. And now I'm going to sit here until I remember it. Fine. Okay. I could say something while no, you're no, thinking no. about it. Yeah, you can cut. It was something on the lines of, um, Oh, if you've played, yes, okay, the difference between you and me is I have played different types of instruments before. I've played really old, I've played modern, I've played, um, you know, my trade instrument versus your um, custom modern traditional violin. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can hear the difference. I can hear the difference between a violin down here versus a violin up here versus I've played old Italian, you know, I've played a, a bunch of them. So I can hear the difference from those levels, but I think once you get to a certain caliber of violin, not necessarily price tag, but caliber of instrument, yep. if you've played more, you're used to those instruments, you can quickly recognize, no, I particularly don't like that instrument, but it's a good instrument, or no, that's definitely a terrible instrument. So I think you've played more, and you've played more modern ones than I have, yeah. like, um, by you know, the makers we know. Mm to be able to go yes or no, this mm. one's better by the same maker than... Yeah, you know. definitely, definitely. So if you are definitely. if you are these violinists that are getting asked to come and play these old strads versus the modern ones they've got, mm. you're more likely, because you've played these high caliber instruments, more of them to go, I prefer that strad over this strad or that modern to this strad or whatever it is, because you've got the ear attuned to it. You're saying I'd be more objective if I was asked to go and test out, without a blindfold, test out old versus new? Because I don't think I would be objective. Um, no, I think I, if someone handed me a Strat, I'd be more likely to go, yeah, it's an amazing instrument, because I've only ever played that one right there. I've never played ten others. Yeah, right. And they don't even have to be Strats. Mm. I've played modern instruments and I can hear the difference and I really like them. But you've played, if you've played um, a ton of other instruments at that same level, you're more tuned into what to expect from those instruments, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but I don't expect yeah. anything. That's why I can do it. That's why I can go from one instrument to another, electric, semi-acoustic, old, new, student, whatever. I don't expect anything from any of them. So I just go in the moment with what it is and how to get the best out of it. Mm. So if there's, if, there's, if, if there's these tests where these violinists are coming in from a, if there is a bias of I'm going to play these instruments, therefore I know they're going to be to the level that I need them to be up here. Then I don't think we can speak for how, how other people approach it, but we can definitely say that the people who promote old instruments or play them or have been loaned them definitely belong to a certain club of people that have to continue to believe that. Otherwise they seem really ungrateful as well. It's a lot of modern players who play modern instruments now. But where are the newspaper articles about that? No one cares. People only care about people playing on the old instruments. And that's irritating because that's only half of the story. That's what I don't like about it. It's only half of the story. It's like all these people play on these old instruments. Silence. Yeah. There's plenty of people who play new instruments. I actually had to give up my old instrument. And now recordings will, will shine the light on the truth. Every time I was in a recording studio with the old one, 
Ah, uh, the old one being a 1690 Marty, Nicola Nicola Marty, Marty right. And every time, Dad bought it in the I 60s, know. so, you know, he paid a few thousand pounds for it in those days. And we've had it in the family ever since, and it was handed to me in 1997. And I'm like, yeah, cool, whatever. Because I'm pretty chilled about what I play. I don't, back then, I just got given what I played. I never chose, and I was happy with that. I don't care, whatever. So every time I'm in a recording studio or in chamber music, I am the softest of all of them. Because that's a baroque instrument. Well, yeah, but look, there's, there's many reasons that I was softest. Uh, we can go into that in different videos about original bowings and all of that kind of stuff. So there's quite a few reasons that I would be softest. But a recording studio does not lie. Every time I got in there, the microphone, I would see the engineers, they would have to put the microphone closer to mine than anyone else's. And now, that's comment, just put your comments in, I know not... what you're saying, it's you, you should press harder, you know, you haven't got the right strings on, blah, 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 blah. But Amani, I tried everything but Amani, with that Amani, instrument. Amani's are known to be softer, that's why no yeah. one plays on them that are concerto yeah. solo. So what Stradivari did was to flatten the top a bit and make a few teeny modifications and then it was louder because concert halls were getting louder and soloists were getting more smashy. Isn't that a bit, okay. And that's we can talk about this a little bit, but isn't that quite a significant like you say, oh yeah, you changed yeah. 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 It changed. You're gonna have to have trouble editing if you do that. <laughs> I'll just keep it in. <laughs> uh, you say he changed millimeters between the Amadi models to how Strad then started making them. But those millimetres... Millimetres made a big difference. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they did, didn't they? But did they? Let's compare gut strings. Let's compare the right so rooms. Many... And we can't now because it's a modern yeah, age so now. So we many, can't compare. So many variables to yeah. like if you wanted to go back and talk about that. But, I mean, lengthening the neck and the fingerboard made huge differences to the violin. Yeah. Yeah, but we've totally gone off topic, but we'll yeah, but that that's well, <laughs> that's fine. But it reminds me of so okay, so when you're buying an instrument and you get these old instruments that come off for sale and they've been renovated, restored is the correct word, but I, I I like to think of it as a renovation because you know in Melbourne you have these old facades at the front and legally you, you've got to keep those facades no matter how disgusting and rising damp and all of that but the law says if it's historically important you've got to keep it so you've got these old fronts you're talking about property i'm talking about, about the buildings <laughs> yeah right so yeah. the front stays i mean if you were spending thirty thousand dollars on an instrument you'd need a long time to get used to it because it's a lot of money for you and no not get used to the instrument but i have to just be so sure that that's it and thankfully with what i've decided to do for when i go to buy another instrument i I'm okay to go to the maker and be like, yeah, take my money out. I like that. But I couldn't walk into a violin shop, have them hand me an instrument that I may be able to take out for a loan and try and, and then hand over 50 grand going. I'd have to just be so sure yeah, that that was the instrument. And just sorry, which yeah. is why I wanted to take um, a few months ago, I, just, I had the thought of, you no, know, when I go to get another instrument, I'll go everywhere, I'll try everything, mm. I'll take it to my luthier, I'll take it to you, um, you know, like make sure that it's all good and it's a good instrument and that I can feel comfortable paying that price. But then it just was, no. Nah. You know what? It's the worst idea. Taking it to your teacher, I mean, I know I'm your teacher, but taking it to someone to give their two cents, they are so full of bias and they've got their own agendas. No, it depends. You'd have to trust the per no, people that right. they were so objective. You'd have to bring your butcher and your baker and all these people who are not in the music business at all. No, but... That, um, because they're objective. No, no, but you have to really trust the people you take it to. Yeah. So if I were to go to, first of all, here's a violin, never matter where it's from, uh, I like it, what do you think because I trust your voice? But and you know what I would say? What would I say? You know me now, what would I say? I don't put me on the spot. What would I say? Don't worry, I'll tell you if you don't guess. Oh, I'll just well, no, you'd say take it to Paul. Oh, I would I would say take it to Paul to get a proper valuation. No. That's what I would say. But what would I say? If you'd found your dream instrument, what would I say? I don't know. I'd be like, good on you. Do it. 
Because it's you, it's your decision, and it's no, how but, you feel about it. No, but if I had an instrument that I like, yeah. because this is what I would try to figure out, and I take it to you, and you go, you can maybe pick up on something that I hadn't picked up on about I wouldn't. I would you totally you trust that you, if you had three that you were trying to toss up between, I would get you to stand over there and I would play them all and I'd play exactly the same music on each one so you could make the yeah. decision. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't say anything about it. No, I want you to. No, but I, I have nothing to say but about it. what if I had an instrument that I really like and you go, can't you hear that it breaks at this point? But you'd be point. able to hear that too. Well, then, you know, it's just getting a second opinion on it. And then I would take it to this my listener and he would go, well, how much is it? I'd say X amount of dollars. And he, he may go, he would say, way too much. They're more. ripping you off. Here's a proper valuation because I'm a proper instrument maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get into that one. Well, this is another episode. This actually happened. Yes. Someone's trying to sell someone something for $25,000 and it's a German trade instrument and it's $5,000 max. When did that happen? This is a different episode. Stay tuned for the used car salesman episode. of the violin world episode. Look, I have I've had friends that um, go and look at instruments and take their teachers. It's mm. just it, but it's just to get it. I don't, I think I don't Can see my face. Yes, it's, it's, like, it's, it's so bad. Let me tell you one story. But no, what if I came to you <laughs> and I had an instrument and it's making the same point and and you just went, it's not worth that money. But I wouldn't know. Because I don't have, I don't know exactly what it is. All I can say to you is, do you love it? Does it do what you want it to do? And then go and take it to a proper if you can value it absolutely properly. And then you decide. Okay. Well, you know, well, that's honestly luckily, what I would do. Luckily, I have been around you long enough before I have gone and made that purchase yet. Because otherwise, I would have done something like that. I would have walked into a shop and bought something. Even though the ones that I actually liked were, I you know, were good. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Thankfully I skipped that because I definitely had that mindset of, oh, I'm going to have to go overseas. Mm. I had oh, that yeah, yeah. for a long time, yeah. which was yeah. um, not necessarily Italy, but just there's more stuff over there. Yeah. There, I think there probably is more stuff over there and there's less, um, uh, it seems like the instrumentalists over there are a bit more educated about what's what and they're more on the ball about what's what and they're not so easily ripped off as we are here because here we're not such a super cultured country you know it we're a colony and we're a british colony so it's uh more likely we're going to bring something down i mean what am i doing i'm bringing down the whole elitism of old instruments that's the australian thing but i feel so sorry for anyone who's trying to buy a new instrument, new, old, whatever. They need a replacement instrument. So their path is, they're told by everyone, they've got to go overseas. They've got to buy an old instrument. They've got to mortgage their parents' house to get it, and they've got to pay it back for the rest of their life. It's just absolutely ridiculous. It's just simply not the case. And if you realised what the old instruments were, are, they're wood, <laughs> they're in a particular shape, they've got glue, they've got varnish, uh, they've got no, strings, no. they've got a pretty they've little got, scroll. They've got animal glue, that's, you know, it's not any kind of glue, it's important. Uh, okay, they've got, they've got one fine tuner. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my point is, a machine, now, we have the technology to copy Exactly. Oh, please, I don't want to get into this one right now. But my point is, anyone who believes they only can settle for an old instrument on their journey of finding a replacement instrument, I feel sorry for those people. I feel sorry for people that think they have to spend a certain sum of money. Yeah, a certain magical number. Yeah, I've got 70 grand. And do you not walk, walk into a shop saying, go, what's your budget? What's your budget? Oh, you say 70 grand, they bring out all this oh, junk. Oh, you happen to have just 70 grand. Exactly. Oh, that here's price. one I prepared earlier. Here's five. Well, they all happen to be around the 70 grand mark. It, it's, I mean, there's, it's horrifying. There's definitely... Um, Okay, if you walk in and you're a student intermediate and you go, I don't want to spend over five grand. That's reasonable to walk in to go, I don't want to spend over five grand. Mm. And then, well, we've got some of these instruments, that's within your budget. 
and then maybe you go, okay, I want a bit more, you know, maybe it's this price range between, I don't know, five and it, ten look, or it's whatever. It's still the same problem. It's still the same problem. You tell someone your budget, and they bring out their junk, and hopefully you'll choose one. That's the model that they're working with. Mm. They, it's possible that sometimes they don't even know exactly what it is. Oh, there's a lot of confusion in these French, is it German, is it this, is it that, right? And then you've got the, the added layer of the teacher getting involved. Now, I know, it's another episode. This whole thing's just going to be, it's another episode. It's it another is, episode well, because we, everything we talk about links to other problems, which is, yeah. which is why we're going to have a whole series of these yeah. videos. Um, there are big right. problems, and we have to just shine a light on it and get people to <laughs> just think for themselves. If you get an icky feeling when you're in one of these places, you feel like, you know when you walk into Telstra sometimes and they're just trying to sell you all this stuff and these new plans and all this extra data, and then you end up with this thing and you walk out. I will never forget. I, I will never want just, that. This is totally random, but I will never forget. I had this old Nokia 3310 for a while. I love the old Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was, um, I was out to copy with a friend, and I was on the phone calling my bank, <laughs> and I had to sort of, you know, you know how they get new security questions, so that they yeah. you, so you can. <laughs> I go, okay, we've just sent you a text message with a security code. Can you really make the code? I've gone, I can't. I go, why not? Because I can't read it on my phone while I'm on the phone to you. They go, what kind of phone do you have? Nokia 3310. <laughs> and my friend is sitting across the, the table from me just cracked up oh. laughing because they knew the question was, what kind of phone do you have? And yeah. you don't have an iPhone. I do now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't check Hang the text the message. Past. So, <laughs> new technology. Mm. You know, that means but that was pretty funny. No, it sort of goes back to why, why don't you just get some laser printer to print you out a Strad? <laughs> oh, <laughs> if you want a Strad, just get a, get a copy. I don't, uh, and I, I, I I'll continually ask, I just don't understand why. We're in this really weird place of you're obsessed with the authentic Strad instruments, mm. and there's only a finite amount of them left. Mm. And that we can't ever get our hands on them, really. No. Then you've got makers that are still making violins today, which I think is really cool. I think it's really artistic and, and skillful. Um, and then we've got the technology to create violins in a new way now. Mm -hmm. People aren't really there yet. But then why are these makers, oh no, I suppose it, but why are these makers that we still, so they're making modern instruments. They're in the 21st century, they're still making violence by hand, but they're making direct copies of these strats in one area. What's the point? Yeah, the handbrake really went on, didn't it? There's just no development whatsoever. Uh, that wasn't even your point, but that's the point you've made. It, it's just that... It's incredibly confusing, like, isn't it? Strad, okay, or Amadi, uh really went and designed this model violin we have. Then they were going, yeah, this is my design, and I'm making it this way, which is why if you look at Amani's versus Strat versus Guarneri's, there's differences, and you can tell, you know, they're almost like their signature on it. But then these modern makers that should be doing the same, put their own signature yeah, on it, yeah. literally they signed the label and put it in there, yeah. you know, but it goes, but this is a Guarneri copy. Well, then you're just making a copy of somebody else's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what my point is, but my point is that I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay to be confused. Let's let's frame it a little differently. Why is it that woodwind oh. players, percussion players, and keyboard players and piano players, why are they playing on instruments that don't look anything like the instruments of the Baroque? Why has have those instrument families had a lovely, slow development? And we'll put some pictures up about this. It's going to be lovely. We, we will be doing a history of the violin video. Yeah, so just think about why, it, why has the violin had a bell jar put over it? And as you say, people are still making them, but the way they make them has not changed. Oh, I mean, you know, we do have factory-made violins now. And some of them are quite high quality. It's not that all factory-made instruments are terrible. 
There's a joke about Skylark, but actually the workers at the Skylark factory were amazing. Anyway, off topic. So let's just think about that for the next video. Why does the violin look like something from the Baroque? And all the other instrument families, the instruments look, look really modern. Think of clarinet, think of a Steinway grand, like a big black, sleek, modern looking well, thing. Well, let me ask you a question. We're going to go into that in our yeah. next video for sure, because it's such a great thing. Oh, I'm so looking forward to that. And I know what your point is, because I've read your notes on it already. <laughs> Homework. Homework. Uh, but just quickly, I, I know what you mean by the violin hasn't changed. I, 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 At all. But I want to ask you, now, okay, when we talk about this, I'm excluding anything that's more than four strings or more than anything amplified. Yeah, yeah, I know you are. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but they don't. So I want to stick to the traditional Yeah, traditional violin. Yeah, yeah. Because yes, there have been yeah, yeah. complete changes to the violin when it comes to amplified, fully electric. Yeah, but we're not so talking about that. So that's no. in another category. Yeah. So when it comes to our traditional yeah. acoustic instruments, yeah. from the bar Baroque instrument through to the present, present yeah. day, it has changed. They have become more powerful. Mm. Is it a bad thing? That's what I want to know from you. Is it a bad thing that this... Now, again, not including... I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm just... Is it a bad thing that they're still being made by hand? And we can talk about the methods in which people make them because mm. we've got some opinions on a certain type of... Mm. <clears throat> we'll get there. Um, but that they're still... They have to be made for wood or do they? I don't know. Like, do you see what my question is? Yeah, so is it a bad thing that they're still made in a that way they that they made in the Baroque? They yeah. Made. You want my personal opinion? You haven't asked the other question. Is it a bad thing that they look exactly the same? Whereas well, every a, other instrument family, a, the look of them has really that's changed. A, that's a look thing, but my, my question is, is it a bad thing that they haven't... Because you're like, why haven't they changed? Pianos have changed, woodwinds, all that's changed. Yes, obviously I think it's a bad thing that haven't changed. Why? Yes. Okay, tell me why. Because it's really hard to feel... Like if you're playing romantic music it's you feel like you sort of fit in because the romantic period was sort of like the height of the orchestra and the orchestra is full of heaps and heaps oh, of of course yep monica kuro like the message okay sorry <laughs> <laughs> so yes i think it's a bad thing that they haven't changed that much the construction of them, the, the look of them. For me, it's the look more than anything that... So aesthetics. But aesthetics is everything. Because if you're hacking away playing Ligeti Violin Concerto or playing something... Or is it Ligeti? It's up to me when I'm saying it. Oh, so is it Chopin or Chopin? Just you you on me. <laughs> How do you pronounce, what's his first <laughs> Um. Mm. You better cut that because you're probably wrong. Anyway, um, so this is, this is more like a realistic conversation because I'm trying to tell you what I think and you keep arguing with me, which is great. This is, all, this is what it should be all about. <laughs> right, so how come you accept a modern piano as being perfectly acceptable in the 21st century? Black, sleek, modern, uh, the actual sound of it's really sustained compared to what it used to be. Like you imagine a harpsichord, which is in Bach's time, and is a modern it? piano now. If you're going to derail everything I say, then we're changing the subject. So, if, because it's been in our face for 400 years, yes. the development, the natural progression of the piano, we've mm. totally accepted. And then we've totally accepted the non-progression of the violin. You haven't answered my question. I, I have. I said I think it's a bad thing. That was your question. Do you think it's a bad thing? I said, yeah, it's a bad thing. <laughs> Bad thing. That's because you accept it as being inevitable. You accept.
it. No, but that's, as, not, that's, not, that's not fair. As there was nowhere else for it to go. No, that's not fair to say. Well, why do you think it's a good thing? If they're just copies and a machine could probably make them with more accuracy than a human. Well, that goes to... And quicker. No, that, then that's a question of should they still be handmade? That, no, that's a separate question. Well, then you've got to stop asking me all the same, like a, more than one question in the same question. Because I know you did ask that question, handmade. I don't think they need to be handmade considering what they are. If they're just copies made on moulds, they're not handmade. They're not getting a piece of wood and carving it freehand. Okay. They've well, got moulds. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, I, the piano met its limitations when it was in an early development. Then they changed the frame to, I think, steel. They put um, cloth over the hammers. Then they were able to project more. But it met its limitations. And yeah, they, they dealt with those. Yep. Yes, and then they dealt with them, and then they created the, now with the modern piano, yep. and they can do more. Let me ask my question. The Baroque violin got to limitations. We we what we call Frankenstein them. So you know, pack the neck off, the put neck a new off. neck on, new bass bar, all that. Yes. Yep. Um, and that pushed our violin further. So the music that we're playing today, orchestras, solo repertoire, chamber, that violin is suited for. You've still missed the main point of Wait, what I'm saying. So what is the limitation that our current traditional acoustic violins have that you want to see again changed? The look of it. The look of it. The piano changed its look with every decade, basically. And the look affected how it sound? It's not the point. Yes, it's, it is exactly it's not the, the point. point. It's not because the look of a modern piano, you could still, you could put curly legs and old wood and and decorate a Steinway, a modern Steinway, to make it look baroque, and it wouldn't change the sound of it. So you, everything I'm talking about the violin is that the violin shape hasn't changed at all. So you're telling me to forget the look of it? No, just listen, like. Yes, aesthetics means something. It does, because it's the way people go about designing the instrument because they look good, people go, oh yeah, if I see a violin, and I've always said this, I'll take a violin with a certain type of sound, but if it has an ugly red varnish on it, I don't want it. I don't like red varnish. That's a look thing. But if the instruments we have today, mm. yes, they are a baroque design mm. with a modern setup, mm. which we can talk about if that's a good or bad thing. I've already said it's a bad thing. Yeah, it's a Frankenstein in a Frankenstein. Yeah. I mean, but they work. They yeah, are still they, creating they work. a really good. And it's all about sound because it's an instrument that's designed to make sound to play music. Yeah, it, so it, that's a practical it. application of the yeah, violin. which should be the heart of the issue. Or the should be. Yeah, should be. Yeah. So how many people like, care about sound when they're shopping for a violin? Is it old? Does it have a label? Or yeah, if it's that's, unlabeled, that's, that's, but old, yeah, it'd be cheaper. That's dumb stuff, in my opinion. But when you say the violin hasn't, oh no, okay. When I look at the instruments and they've been modernized to be able to play Shoster violin concerto or sit in an orchestra or whatever, it goes to it still works, which is why these strads are still being played because yes, they've been Frankenstein, and, mm. you know, they still work, they still get a really good sound out of it. So do makers want to go and change the look of them? I don't care. But go makers with... can't change the look of them. They've tried and tried but and tried and tried. But that's a supply and demand thing. If people aren't... Yeah, but why but is it you, that the yes, market wants it to look like a Do you see what my point is? Yeah, I do, but... I, then why do are you fighting on I'm, my point? I'm saying that you don't think it matters the look of it, that it's a Baroque design. And for me, that is the most important aspect of how it hasn't changed. And the second most important is that it's still handmade and it doesn't have to be because everyone that's made is an exact copy of one of these old guys. And every time a maker tries to change the shape, no one goes for it. They don't want to be different. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. I know you do, which is stupid that we're getting all because <laughs> we do understand what we're saying. I'm not appreciating that the violin looks like okay, a Okay, let me try easier. and reword this again with probably the same answer from you. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that... Oh, wait, what was I going to say? If they... Uh, I do know what you're saying. They still work. Uh, why fix something when it's not broken, the moulds are all there, the instrument makers are learning just to make it in their old way. It's a continual tradition that hasn't it changed. Works. 
It works. Yeah, it works, but what could it have been if it had had the same development as the piano? Can you imagine standing up next to a Steinway, playing an acoustic violin that looked much more modern? I guess I'm trying to say I can't fault people. I can fault... Oh my gosh, so much. Hence why we're going to have like eight seasons of the show. <laughs> um, but when I see... A, okay, we can talk about um, a violin maker making it by hand versus with uh, machines. Okay, fine. If it creates the instrument with a good sound, mm. I don't particularly care. Mm. I can't fault people for going, no, I want to make it by hand because that's craft, it's beautiful, and yeah. I think that's fine. Yeah. Or if someone goes, all right, that's this particular look of it, I want to create something different, hence new types of instruments. Or I want to use a machine, fine. But I guess if it, if it works... But yeah, you say people can do what they want as long as the, the right thing comes out. Because as a, as a player, out. I go, I don't... And this is me going, I don't particularly care if it's old or modern, I really don't. Yeah. I don't care if it's uh, handmade or factory made, I want the quality of it. I only care if it's an ugly red varnish. Yeah, me too. Uh, that's something we can 100% agree on. The candied apple varnish. Not the candy apple varnish. Oh, that's, that's my list. I don't like favorite. that, but I mean, I've seen. Um, I mean, the red, red colour. Yeah. You know, like, you like more the yellow can browns. I name, can I name drop? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a compliment. I don't think we should. It's a compliment. Alright, go on. Okay, Michelle Woods chose a red varnish. I actually like that. Oh, so you do like red varnish. Yeah, but not like but that's the one I look at and I'm like, okay, yeah. But I've just I'm, Right. Maybe I'm just traumatized from my old student violin, which is really <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but I've seen these um these modern uh, violins where yeah, this candy apple varnish that you say, it's just like it looks fake. Yeah, but the I mean, reason Michelle it looks Michelle so fake. Really beautiful. Oh. Yeah. But the, the newer, they, they, mm. Okay, prepared, have your brain just like, not blown, but just a little bit unhinged. The candied apple varnish, or real shiny, modern looking varnish, mm. on a design that is Baroque. That's where the brain just grates. That's yeah, why that's it doesn't like, look good. That's like when, um, well, it's, it's I sort of see, is it like, uh, yeah, something modern. It's it, incongruous. It's it's a modern thing stuck on an old it's thing. It's like when actually when you see a beautiful old house, but you walk inside, it's like modern set up. It's, yeah. It's, actually it's the, other way the and so and so that's what I'm talking about the aesthetic. And people don't question it because they're so used to the look of the violin. The violin looks one way. I, I guess I can't so. understand why it's that big of a deal. To well, you about okay, I'll tell you what. aesthetics. It's like, okay, it's like, and I'll quickly sidetrack. It's when people go, they prefer the look of a, of a, a tailpiece with one fine tuner versus the look of a four carbon fiber fine tuner. I go, does it work? Yeah, yeah, Does I it facilitate yeah. the type of strings you've got? Yeah. That's valuable here yeah. because then it goes back to, yeah. does it work? Yeah. If you go, no, I must have it because it looks better, yeah. I go, that's stupid. That's yeah. just a waste of energy you're trying to understand. But let me justify why it bothers me so much. It bothers me so much because a few hundred years ago it got set. We can do a whole episode on why it got set in stone as being this particular shape, right? No! So, present day, they look the same. They look baroque. They look old. They look from another time. And people continually are obsessed with the old in violin world. So yes. who, this is a myth that old things are better than new things, right? Because we've already established that the old thing and the new things, the new things are just a copy of the old thing. You've got all these people aspiring to own these old things mm -hmm. instead of supporting mm -hmm. development, change, design, mm -hmm. innovation, all these things that we pretend that we're into, except when it comes to the violin. No, we've got to have an old thing. You imagine having a car that old? You know, you say the old instruments, they work, they do work. But they're so overpriced and so expensive that hardly anyone can even afford to use them. So then what are you left with? You're left with all your lower priced ones and all your factory made ones. So if everyone was more interested in how the violin could develop or could have developed, or should have developed, they wouldn't be so fascinated with the old things. They would look at the old things as Okay, they're really precious, they belong in a museum, and now let's work towards how can a violin look modern but be exactly the same? Sounding, 
usefulness, practicality, all of that stuff. If there. someone handed me an instrument, say it was, okay, so one of the big changes that people didn't like or something, were the cornerless violins, right? That was a change that was... Yeah. You know, if someone handed me a violin that was cornerless or something that did not look like a traditional modern different type of F holes, whatever, no scroll, I don't know. Again, for me, personally, if I went, can I play what I need to play on it, great. But that's you. You're, you've got this brain that can actually absorb more than one idea. But I don't you understand. Be judging I, it by its cornerless okay, shape. Okay, but let me go back to this yet again, okay? If you look at, again, the, the piano is a really good one because mm. it met its limitations on what it could do. Therefore, they went, let's adjust this, make this better, upright, whatever, steel frame. Then, those limitations went much further. But at the same time as these, these structural developments happen, the look of them changed according to the fashions of the time. They did not stay looking like okay, the wrong instruments. But That's my I, only point. Okay, but I guess I'm just, I don't see how you care so much over the look of them. Can a violin maker make you something that is a modern instrument? Yes. Can they go to uh, the right kind of maker and use a, a, a machine and make a factory made one? Yes, it can look like a certain way, fine, but it can be a quality instrument if it can, you, like, if you can use it properly. I just don't understand. Yeah, but would you turn up to say the MSO with a cornerless violin? If it if it made me play, if, yeah. Do you know what kind of criticism you would get for even owning a cornerless violin? I don't care what other people think. Yeah, well, that's you, but most people aren't like that. But do like you not that. see? <laughs> it's so annoying because I get what you're saying about yes, it is a baroque design. You know, low about, uh, up about, f holes that look reverse like, corners, reverse corners, curly scroll, yeah, which are all features of an era that is so over. Like, yes, I no know. other aspect of our life do we have anything baroque, yeah, lying around. <laughs> Neck, fingerboard, type of strings, yeah. bass bar. Mm -hmm. Those are significant changes from the baroque instrument yeah. to. Yes, the Baroque shape, yeah. but with those on it. You cannot try... Shostakovich wouldn't have written his violin concerto for a Baroque violin because you can't... No, exactly, exactly. No, so that's right. a change that was made yeah. to now what we have our modern yeah. setup. Yeah. That is good and made the violin can do more. Yeah, it's louder. Yeah. You can always put steel strings on too. And yeah, but like... Lengthening the finger. Oh yeah, yeah, all that stuff that happened absolutely ages ago. Yeah. So what what else changed because the violin hasn't been able to make a big transition like the piano? The technique that we have to use now because we have to play with modern pianos, which are so much louder than the keyboards of the time. What? You don't like it, but it's true. So now we have to press heaps harder. So violin technique has totally changed. So that we smash the violin. We press so hard with the hip sharp. Just you wait until right. we do a film a lesson of mine and all you say to me is just smash it, just smash it out, just smash it out. Oh, don't worry. Just smash it out. Press, press, smash it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's lying. <laughs> I guess I, I'm not bothered by things not changing like that. I'm bothered that you think like an aesthetics thing is that big of a deal when you can. If you change the aesthetics of it and it can still play what you need to play or you don't change the aesthetics on it and it can still play what you want to play. I guess that's why people aren't changing it because what we have works. You're so innocent. <laughs> you think it's not changed because it just simply works? I know. Think that, that, maybe that's a bad narrative that I hold, but that's what violin makers think. Yes, this is what works, therefore why do Well, they they're not going to make instruments that aren't going to sell, sure. So the makers make the instruments that sell. The public want, if they can't get an old one, they'll just get a copy of something that looks beautiful and old and violin-y and, um, and then, oh, damn, lost it. <laughs> no, 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 I'll get it back. What, would, what were you saying? Should I just went totally blank? <laughs> um, if it's oh. not broken, I'll fix it. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 okay, so you, right. You're so innocent. That's what I was saying, right. So, back in the time of Viom, as you know, he realised that it was going to be much more profitable to sell old instruments than sell his own instruments. 
which were very nice. So another episode is going to be about him completely. I'm not going to tell you. So he benefited I... from the myth that old instruments were better than current makers. So he benefited from it, even though he was a really great maker. So he thought, that's okay, it doesn't matter. I'm going to profit from this. So he gets in with all his auction buddies and he sells older instruments at very high prices. And that mythology is born, that only old instruments are worth anything. And he himself, a great maker of the time, went along with it because he could make more money from it and that's why it hasn't changed because you can make more money from selling old instruments and that's been happening for unfortunately for years. every single thing we're going to talk about there's like 10 different topics we'll cover i know i know so I know. we just cut it all up we'll be in different outfits every scene <laughs> okay so just a sidetrack i always wear sometimes like colorful pants but a black top mm. But it's only I'm going to record from here, so I'm really challenged. <laughs> I'm going to have to go shopping. Anyway. Oh, that's your look, the black. The black. Yeah, understated. Anyway, look, we've covered a lot today. I, I, I've even lost what the myth was. Oh, yeah, $10 million. And that's okay. You can deal with it in post. <laughs> She's just thinking about the hours and hours. No, I just, I'm going back to just. It would be annoying if you, if you, and obviously, if you think about it, it's like people are still making the same thing. Yeah, again, in an old way. Yeah. And again. Yeah. And again. That's maddening, but then you have to think about what it is they're making and why they're making it. And it is a, is a demand. It's a market driven thing, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess there's a part of me like, there are things about it that are bothersome and I'm like, that's stupid. You know? I, I think makers that are still making by hand, they go, I have a template for this Guarneri, and that's the one I'm going to make. Well, they must enjoy it as well. They must be yeah, go on, good I at think it. If you've got the skill to make a violin by hand, why are you... I mean, there's a Guarneri model. I'm selling a Guarneri model. Okay. If I wanted a Guarneri, I wouldn't I want the coffee I think those models should it. be machined. Just machine out a couple hundred Why would you call a Guarneri for, for it? Yeah, this is, a, this is a copy of a strap. Well, if you can't have the real thing, why would you want to copy? Then go to a living maker and say, make me what you've always dreamed of making and you won't believe what comes out. No, I know, don't tell me that. No, I'm just saying generally when you when you <laughs> go to anyone who creates anything and, you know, you just say, make me what you want to but make. But when me. we talk, and we will do a whole history of the violin and we sort of kind of got into it today, which it just... You can cut it, don't worry. <laughs> but just the, the development of the violin, I think. The non-developments of the violin. And... Cut. cut. <laughs>